Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. How's everyone today? Doing great, Commissioner. We do appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to join us. If you could please start us out with an opening statement, just previewing the championship game and recapping what has been a very successful regular season. Well, first, let me say thank you to all of the media outlets. Um, you've been consistent all season, and we could not be what we are without your help. So thank you very much. Uh, it has been a very good season for us, unprecedented season. We haven't gotten all of the numbers yet, but we know that we are set another record as far as attendance this year uh, with the addition of HBCU Go. Uh, we've set a record of the number of games that have been te televised nationally uh, live. Uh, our footprint has expanded. Our fan base has expanded, and it's been a very good year. Um, from a competitive standpoint, obviously, Jackson State completed their first undefeated season. But back to, you know, old swag ways, you, you dial back to last Saturday, uh, three teams were in the championship. Uh, last Saturday, all the way up until they were not. And then Southern University had the opportunity uh, this weekend with their win over Bramlin. So that's the level of competitiveness that we wanted. It brings that level of excitement. It brings the fan excitement. And we're just very, very pleased to be in the position that we're in to come into this Saturday, uh, 3 p.m. in Jackson, Mississippi, Jackson State versus Southern University, ESPN2 with uh, a very lot of eyeballs watching the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Those opening comments, Commissioner McClellan. First question goes to James Hill. Hey, I hope you and everybody at the SWAC office are well uh, and happy holidays. Can you talk a little bit about uh, TV opportunities in terms of uh, a possible SWAC network and what that might look like? And as you move forward, the television aspect of the SWAC. Yeah, Mr. Hill, I would say we already have a SWAC network. It's called HBCU Go uh, in conjunction with ESPN. Uh, when you look at our football games, out of the 60-plus games, only eight of them were not televised. So what we looked at overall a couple of years ago was that we wanted our games to be on national television. Obviously, the digital side has been able to expand. But having your own network has to equate to revenue. And ESPN and HBCU Go has given us the greatest opportunity to enhance our overall revenue structure. That's what our corporate partners were looking for, and that's what ultimately we were able to deliver. Uh, so it is not our intent to create a SWAT network. Part of our deal with HBCU Go is that they're going to expand their platform where all of our SWAT games whether it's football, softball, baseball, soccer, track, tennis, will be streamed on HBCU Go, and some of those will be picked up uh, on a national basis as football was. So part of the revenue that we're receiving, we're going to invest in infrastructure on our 12 campuses to where we'll have artificial intelligent cameras that will be able to deliver high-definition content, and we're gonna create these stations through HBCU Go where you can log on 24 hours, seven days a week and watch SWAC sports. So it's a long range plan. This is phase one and we're gonna ultimately get there. In terms of expansion, uh, we know the SWAC is in a good place, but there's other uh, HBCs, if you will, with uh, quality brands who are clamoring. Uh, would, there, would there be expansion at some point? Is that a possibility? Well, I think any and everything is always a, a possibility. It is not our intent to expand. We're not out there seeking uh, expansion. We did not seek uh, to expand with family and with doing cooking, but when those opportunities uh, became available, uh, we clearly jumped on those opportunities. I can tell you we're not going to expand for the sake of expanding. If you go back and look at what I've said ever since I've been uh, in this chair, it has been that state. We're not going to expand just for the sake of expanding. And if we do expand, it's going to be more about what those institutions can bring to the Southwestern Athletic Conference. How are they going to allow us to grow? How will they allow us to be able to generate the additional revenue? Uh, some of the things that you would probably look at from an expansion standpoint 
you know, are those key elements, you know, they're going to have to match our institutions, you know, from an academic standpoint, from a competitive standpoint, from a geographical standpoint, and also we're going to be looking, you know, for if an institution is able to come in, how many fan support, you know, media market. So what those other power conferences are looking for, this power conference will be looking for the same. So if somebody fits that bill and it's going to be beneficial to the SWAC, we will definitely take a look at it. But we're not out there seeking expansion at this point. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed week. Thank you. Next question goes to Kendrick Marshall. Yeah, Commissioner. Um, Sam, you was recently left out of the FCS playoffs. They thought they had a team that could make it um, this year. And part of the reasoning for that was their non-conference scheduling. Is there a way the SWAC can help supplement a team schedule to put them in a better position to possibly make the playoffs if they don't win the conference? When you say supplement, please expound on that question. Yeah, there's obviously a, a, a mandated number of games that have to be played by teams in conference. Is, is there a way the SWAC can possibly, I, I guess, make it a way where schools can have more opportunities to play non-conference games in, in, instead of having to only rely on those mandated conference games throughout the season? Well, the eight game conference schedule was voted upon by the athletic director. So the institutions uh, will determine whether we play eight games, seven games, six games, no games. That's not a conference office decision. That's an institutional decision. But uh, we have a strong, legitimate Division I conference, and our games are strong enough in order for you to get into the FCS playoffs, as evident uh, last year from Florida AM. Uh, there are a lot of politics, as we know. Uh, there are a lot of deserving teams, uh, as you know, when it comes to the FCS playoffs. We've always encouraged our teams, not just in the sport of football, but in the sport of basketball, to play a legitimate division one conference schedule. Uh, you're starting, and I don't want to deviate from FAMU, but you're starting to see it in basketball. We did not mandate uh, the schedule. The Pac-12 agreement of bringing in those schools are going to do nothing but help our net rankings. Going out on the road and playing mid-major schools that we can get some victories, and you've seen that in basketball versus playing the number one, two, three, four, five, six team in the nation where you know you're not going to win. And we've talked about the same thing in football. We understand if you want to go get a game guarantee that you're probably going to try to come back and uh, get a game guarantee on your own. Uh, going back to the television conversation, the more revenue that we bring in at the Southwestern Athletic Conference, the more revenue we distribute to our member institutions, and it'll alleviate that need to go and have to get those game guarantees, which will give them the opportunity to play some of those teams that are at the FCS level that you know that you can compete with, win those games and get the requisite amount of points in order to get into the FCS playoffs. So in my opinion, it's not the reduction of the SWAT games. It's equalizing that non-conference schedule, those three games that you have, playing the right schools uh, to be able to get in. Uh, if Jackson State somehow, Kendrick, did not make it to the championship game, they would have been a lock into the SWAC championship, uh, excuse me, the FCS playoffs. And that was because of the way that they scheduled. So it can be done, we've proven last year that it can be done, but institutions have to schedule based upon their needs and the conference office will not interfere with that. As a quick follow up to that, um, how much does it hurt or if at all that the SWAT does have a representative in, in the room when the selections are made for the playoffs? I, you know, I sit in the room, uh, at the highest level, uh, the Division I Men's Basketball Committee, and each and every time there is conversations about the Southwestern Athletic Conference, I'm asked to leave. Uh, and I think the procedure is the same for the FCS uh, selection. So being in the room doesn't necessarily give you a leg up. Uh, it's, you know, the resume and the things that you do outside of it. So not being in the room, in my opinion, doesn't uh, put us at a disadvantage at all. Uh, thank you. Next question. Thank you. Doc, next question goes to Dr. Cudill. Good morning, Dr. McCullough. Good morning. Good afternoon now. Depends thank on where you, you are, Doc. Ah, uh, great point. Great point. Good morning somewhere. I appreciate you saving me on that. With that being said, you said attendance is up. 
uh, broadcast association uh, in terms of visibility is up. Revenues are up. You, you said you revenue. A little bit about, <laughs> well, I thought you said in that last answer, you spoke <laughs> about revenue being Re up. Revenue is up. I so guess I I'm, I'm going to let you I, <laughs> yeah. ask you. I'm sorry, Dr. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Go ahead. <laughs> you kind of let that slip out. I just carried, I just listened and did but I get you, I get you. We can't spoil everybody with the numbers. Uh, maybe I can figure that out some other way. But we, that being said, can you talk about, is it too early to say what's next? Uh, what, what is the next thing that the SWAC under your leadership needs to get done? Well, let's go back to the revenue question. Revenue is up, revenue is up significantly. Uh, I've said this before and I say it now, we are not the small black college for conference anymore. We are a legitimate force. Our revenue numbers are uh, tracking extremely strong. Uh, I have not seen the other FCS conferences revenue this year, but based upon last year's numbers, uh, we will rank first of all of FCS. Given where we are with our television contracts in five years, we will actually surpass two FBS conferences. Again, they might have the ability to up their numbers. Uh, we are going to enter, uh, we have three more years left on our ESPN contract where we're start to enter negotiations with ESPN. So we think that we are in a very positive position uh, to elevate this conference, to be able to do some things that people have never been able uh, to see. We distributed uh, over $9 million last year. We got the final numbers in. That does not include uh, allowing Jackson State to keep all of the revenue uh, from the championship. Game. When you look at distribution to our membership, we have distributed more than all FCS conferences. So uh, James asked that question before, and I've had to say this publicly. People talk about uh, people coming in, but what about schools leaving? Uh, we can honestly say if there is a institution that wants to leave the SWAC, they would have to go power five because there's no other conference that they can get as much revenue distribution from the SWAC. That's how strong we are. And our revenue projections are trending, you know, upward. Uh, so when you start talking about what's next, it is to continue to deliver to our fans a quality product. Uh, it is to continue to deliver the revenue that our member institutions need. So they can do things such as not having to play all of these types of game guarantees, being able to travel uh, in, a, in a first class manner. That's what conference offices are for. And I am proud to say that in four years, we've been able to elevate our revenue structure to where we're now distributing legitimate serious money back to our schools where they can do some of those things. Follow up question uh, in that regard is obviously we've what took place the basketball with the SWAC in the Pac-12 C series? Uh, women's side basketball continues to tick up, and so I know this is about football, uh, but that has been positive both men's and women's, and baseball seems to be ascending as well. But more of a football question that I have, um, and I know the membership does a lot in terms of making the actual decisions, and the office is about it out. Celebration Bowl is the top in regards to where all the teams are seeking to go to win the conference. Is there any uh, information or talk out there about um, a secondary type bowl for those teams that may either get in the playoffs? Um, is that something that has been out there? For yeah, there is talk. Uh, again, as you know, in order for there's only two FCS conferences that are eligible to play in a bowl game. That's the SWAC and the MEAC. And it took special legislation to do so. Uh, right now, the Transformation Committee for the NCAA is going through their process. Uh, the NCAA is going to look a lot different uh, once this process is done. So now is the time that if we want to get anything done to propose uh, getting those things done. But I can tell you, I've had other conferences to reach out wanting to participate. You know, there's been this debate about FCS playoff celebration ball. I can tell you there are many conferences that are saying behind the scenes they would much rather play in some type of bowl game against the Southwestern Athletic Conference that 
the revenue is there and the opportunity to win a national championship is very enticing uh, for those types of institutions. And at the end of the day, it's coming down to revenue. So when you talk about Florida a and you talked about, you know, what that entails, you know, in order to host uh, an FCS championship, the minimum bid is 30000 that's not going to get you a game. You're going to be with somewhere between the fifty, eighty, hundred thousand dollar range, and then a percentage of that revenue has to go back to the NCAA. And then if you have to leave, you have to pay all of your expenses to go. So let's just say family hosted. You know they were going to be out of fifty to eighty thousand dollars to host, whatever it costs for them to go play that following week. So let's say they made it to the national championship game. It could have cost them upwards of two hundred and fifty. $300,000. Uh, again, it's important to be able to play for a national championship. I'm not taking that away, but we have made the decision that the Celebration Bowl is the route that we want to go. We want to be like the SEC and the Big Ten uh, and the Pac-12. We want to be able to compete in a bowl game and compete at the highest level. So getting multiple bowl games is definitely our priority. Um, and I don't know, I can't say it's not imminent, it's not tomorrow. It's not next week. It's going to take some time. But in this new structure of the NCAA, I can tell you 100% we are in the middle of it. We have a voice and we will continue to exert our voice to be able to move our uh, agenda forward and try to get some of the things that we would like to have. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Question goes to Jeff Lightsey, Jr. Commissioner McClellan, I must ask you, you talked about your four years uh, as the commissioner of the SWAC. Would you say this has been the most successful season for you as a commissioner, just football season? I know you have a, a rest of the athletic calendar, but what has that success been like for you this season and how has it felt? Well, I think our success has built. You know, we had a very successful first year, second year, third year. This is the uh, beginning of the fifth year. You know, last year we said it was the most successful that we've seen that this year numbers have kind of blown out of the water. But uh, our success really is predicated on the fact that we have 12 institutions that are on the same page. The athletic directors, the presidents, the chancellors, SWAs, coaches. And, you know, we get in the back room, we fuss and fight. But when we come out, we're on one accord. And that has been the precipice of our success. That has been the spear that has allowed us to achieve those types of things. And when you start seeing like your basketball teams on their own scheduling, you know, mid-majors and, you know, doing the types of things that's going to push the entire needle forward. I think if I had to point to one success that I am most proud of from a competitive standpoint, it would, it would be that. SWAC has always been competitive on the field and on the court. We've always had a large fan uh, base and fan participation. But to get all 12 schools on the same page with one accord, and I think we can all see the light uh, or the prize at the end you know, of this journey. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to continue to be done. We're going to work hard to get that done. But we are in a very good spot. It does feel good for not only the nation but the world uh, to know who the Southwestern Athletic Conference is and for people to look upon the Southwestern Athletic Conference with pride, with dignity versus disdain. Yes, sir. And just a quick follow-up uh, is talking about growing and expanding. I remember there was reports about the a SWAT classic football game. Uh, can you fill us in on any of other details or anything moving forward going into the 2023 season? Yeah, the SWAT Classic this year was the Southern Family U game. We will have one next year. But I think ultimately what you're referencing is our the SWAT Classic that we talked about in Birmingham, Alabama. And when that came out, what that report was that the city council uh, approved funding for us to have that game. We have yet to sign that contract. And the schools that were listed were projected schools. They were probable schools. So there, there have not been contracts that have been signed. What that was, was us going to the city saying the SWAC has the ability to be able to bring some of its teams. Those teams coming to Birmingham is strictly voluntary. And that's something else that I would uh, like to say. The SWAC can't force a team to do anything uh, from a non-conference standpoint. 
even from a conference standpoint, our responsibility is to schedule the games. The schools can rearrange those games. They can move those games. They can't cancel conference games. So the SWAC Classic is just us saying, we have sponsors that want to attach dollars. Why not give those resources directly to the schools? Why don't we create an opportunity for schools to be able to make all of the revenue and not having to share it? But it is 100% the school's uh, choice to participate. And as soon as we have those schools solidified, we will you know, make that path forward. I have to say again, hats off to Mayor Randall Woodfin here in Birmingham of being able to get that through the city council, getting a stadium to where we can keep 100% of the revenue and distribute it back to the school. So uh, we will have a SWAT Classic. The year before that, uh, it was on the campus of Jackson. Last year, it was on the campus of FAMU, and we will keep that going because we think that it is extremely beneficial to our schools from a revenue standpoint. Thank you, sir. No problem. Get two, we'll try to get two more questions in quickly first. Hey, Andrew, I, if they're good, I'm good. I, okay. I don't get a chance to talk. I saw Bradley how disappointed okay. he was when you didn't choose him for Coach Prime. So I'm okay. going to get to you. Okay, I appreciate you, your patience. So I'm good. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, next question goes to Bradley Davis. See, Bradley, I called your name. Man. Yeah, I, pre I, I appreciate that, Commissioner. No problem. <laughs> Looking out for me. Um, so, well, first, just how are you doing today, Commissioner? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking to join the sunlight before uh, before it goes away here in about 12 or uh, 18 hours. But uh, my question is, uh, you know, you talked about all the success with the numbers and everything. What's been something you didn't really expect that's been kind of a pleasant surprise that you didn't expect or, or really see coming uh, this year? That's uh, that's been pretty cool. You know, that's a that's a good question, uh, Bradley. Um, you know, in this business, you always have to expect the unexpected. So I'm not quite sure if there was anything that out there that was unexpected. But I can tell you a pleasant surprise has just been the uh, shattering of attendance numbers. And it's not just been Jackson State. And it hasn't just been the games that Jackson State has played in. When you look across the board at our institutions, they're selling out or near selling. And that's something that we really wanted to bring. We talk about what we do from a conference office, from a revenue standpoint, but there's a whole different ledger of revenue that can be generated by the additional support on those campuses. When you look at sold out games, you know, two or three of those that you normally might not would have had because of the overall intensity and the spotlight and the national exposure being on TV, uh, that has been extreme pleasant surprise. And I can tell you uh, the way that the HBCU Go syndication has worked, again, has been a pleasant surprise. We're in 80 markets from Hawaii all the way to Maine, 80% uh, of the African-American households. So if you want to see SWAC football, you can cut on your televisions and watch SWAC football regardless of where you are. And that is a, a level of exposure that we have never had. And we're going to continue to build upon and grow. And I think it was important for us to have it because it legitimizes us as a quality top conference. And from a corporate partner standpoint, they want that visibility as well. So those two things, in my opinion, has been one of the brightest uh, surprises that I've been able to uh, celebrate over the last four months. Yeah, that's sweet. And just super quick follow up. Uh, what's been the kind of the best SWAC game that you've gotten to catch this year? You know, one that really stuck out just watching on TV or in person. You know, I don't know if I can say a SWAC game. I can say uh, as I was at the volleyball championship uh, last weekend, because I didn't go to any games last weekend because I've been on the road each and every week. But to sit into the stands uh, and watch the Prairie View Valley game unfold. And then when Valley intercepted the ball, I think it was late in the fourth quarter, uh, we kind of turned to the Texas Southern uh, football game against Alabama a and and they were up 21 uh, to six, I believe. And they were up three scores. So I called the staff up. It was like, if Texas Southern win, we have done all of the tie-breaking scenarios. Texas Southern is going to be in the driver's seat. So we're in the stands trying to order a stencil right? Because we only had, you know, 10 days to get a stencil. So we already had the Southern stencil order. We already had Prairie View stencil 
from last year, but we didn't have a Texas Southern stencil. Uh, so it took us about 15, 20 minutes to get the stencil ordered, and then here comes Alabama a and So we're all sitting in the stands uh, like, okay, what's going to happen on this fourth and one, and Alabama a and runs it in. So now Texas Southern is out. Now we turn to the Alcorn State Jackson State game and Alcorn is in striking distance on Jackson State because if Alcorn wins, now Alcorn enters the conversation. And then Jackson State finally pulls out from Alcorn and we catch our breath and said in a matter of 30 minutes, we went from Prairie View winning the West to Texas Southern winning the West to Alcorn possibly winning the West to Southern now having to be Grambling winning the West. And I think that is a microcosm of how this entire season has gone. It has been that exciting week in and week out. Got it. Thank you, Commissioner. No problem. Next question goes to Maurice Scott. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, thanks for taking my question. A uh, couple of questions I had real quick. Um, by the way, I'm here at school and uh, uh, I work in the media, so I'm doing some double stuff here. Um, we used to have a classic here called the Gateway uh, Classic, uh, Earl Wilson, the late Earl Wilson, used to put it together and feature Arkansas Pine Bluff and uh, among other teams annually. With St. Louis being in a prime location in Midwest, is there any thoughts of bringing that classic back here and bringing some swag teams here with the rich football tradition that we have here in the St. Louis area? Um, right now I'm sitting in the high school, uh, home Jackie, John the Kersey, Kellen Winslow, Brian Cox, among others, and one of the all-time winners football programs in the country in the East St. Louis Flyers. Can you comment on maybe bringing a, a a swag game back to the Midwest with our hospitality and also with the hotels and it being a central figure in the United States. Yes, we're open to bringing our brand of football uh, wherever uh, they want us. So we are very excited about the brand that we bring. We're very excited about the energetic fan base that we have and we want to expand. We want to be able to show uh, what SWAT is all about. So short answer to your question is yes, but I will follow up with this. Uh, and I kind of did a, a head shake. I said this three or four years ago, we now know our work. Uh, and if you want us, then we, we know what our worth is. And as long as you're willing to pay us what we're worth, we're willing to come. I think you're on mute there, Maurice. You're on Maurice, you're on mute, sir. I made, I stunned him, didn't I, Maurice? Couldn't, no, no, didn't no, I'm, I'm, I apologize. Thank you, uh, uh, moderator. Now, Commissioner, I was saying I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, I will make, make sure that I get that information out because it is vital for the communities to work with the SWAC and the participating teams and people like yourself to bring that brand uh, to the Midwest. And oftentimes uh, people don't value the value of the swag. So I hear you loud and clear. There have been some problems here in St. Louis, but the leadership is changing. And uh, me being in the position I am, I hear you loud and clear and I'll get that to the appropriate people. Sure, Maurice, and I wasn't necessarily speaking in terms of you know the individuals there. I was speaking more so overall that the value of our brand has increased significantly. And we are open for business. We just want businesses to understand our value and that we will not do business for less than what our value dictates it to be. Thank you for your time. No problem. Next question goes to Mia Berry. Hi, Commissioner McClellan. I hope you had a wonderful holiday. My question for you is over the last few years you've seen conferences kind of change their football alignment so a lot of them are moving away from the division model and just taking the top two teams overall I wanted to know has the SWAC considered this model uh you know in meetings and also from uh what's your opinion on what's better the division model or just taking the top two teams overall well uh there has been some conversation. Uh, because we have an eight game schedule and 12 teams, it will be impossible for all teams to play each other. So if you're talking about top two teams, uh, there again would be some level of tie breaking scenario. 
so it won't necessarily just be record. Uh, we kind of went through this during the COVID period, if you recall, with our basketball, uh, that we had a tie-breaking formula that took into consideration strength of record. Um, so our divisions kind of make that process, one, more exciting, in my opinion, and two, it makes it more fair. Um, oftentimes, you can debate what teams are better than others. Uh, but in the divisional structure, everybody on that side plays everyone. And obviously they are crossover for three games and you get more of a fair representation. You know, I know that the big 10, you know, faced the same issue. The sec faces the same issue with the number of teams and they're looking to move. And we will continue to look, uh, as commissioner, I will reiterate. Our job is to carry forward what our membership wants. If our membership wants a division, we will put that together. If they want none divisions and the top two teams, we will put that together as well. What I think about it really doesn't matter. Uh, I think that's a question that's probably more focused towards the athletic directors because what they want will carry the day in that conversation. Thank you, Commissioner. That's all I had. Have a blessed rest of today. No problem. Thank you. Last question goes to Stephen Gaither. Last question goes to Stephen Gaither. Hey guys, uh, Stephen Gaither, HBCU Game Day. How you doing, Commissioner? Doing fine, Stephen. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, uh, it's football time, football championship time, so everything's kind of football focused. But uh, I think we definitely need to take a step back and, and look at SWAC basketball. Obviously. Um, you know, there was a time, you know, not too long ago where a lot of the teams were struggling to pick up any type of out-of-conference wins against Division One basketball opponents. And obviously, you guys have uh, been able to um, get some major wins this year. Just talk about the progress of SWAC basketball over the last, uh, you know, the last couple of years under your tenure and where you see it going from here. Well, I think it's a concerted effort. Uh, and we had to have buy-in from the coaches. If you go back and you pull the schedules of all 12 of our member institutions, it is not as top-heavy as it has been in the past. And I think a lot of it comes from the understanding of what it takes in order for us to be able to move the conference forward. You know, we've always had a very good brand of basketball, but it's difficult, Stephen, uh, to even beat a medium uh, position team when you're on the road seven, eight, nine, ten games in a row. And ultimately what we talk to our coaches is you can still get your game guarantees, but you don't have to do it at that highest level. We don't have to play the top 25 to get game guaranteed. Maybe you don't get as much if you play a team somewhere in that 120, 125 range, but you can still generate the revenue. That is the reason why I say hats off to Pac-12, they knew that there was a possibility for them to take some losses, but it was extremely important for them to do something that was monumental, and they did. And Pac-12 did it out of the kindness and saying, we want to spotlight HBCUs, even if we take hits from it. And I think what we've shown, even in this short time frame, that given our ability to be able to play those games early on, when we're at our best, we're fresh, not on the road for, you know, 12 days in a row, that we can compete, you know, that the SWAC has moved forward uh, in a lot of instances. Could we have done this four years ago? I don't think so, but our brand is a lot better. I think the second thing, Stephen, is uh, the transfer portal. A lot of people look down on the transfer portal, but the transfer portal allows us to be able to go in and get players that are ready to play some that might have gone up and, and looked to move to a mid-major or some that might have been in division two that got overlooked that is ready for our level as well. And I think our coaches have done a very good job of going into the portal. Now that does hurt high school and we have to figure that piece out. But I think the transfer portal definitely has some good to it. And the third is uh, name, image, and likeness. You can come to Jackson State. You can come to Southern University play the sport of football and get name, image, and likeness deals, compete in a championship uh, on national television, and then go to the Celebration Bowl and 
compete in the bowl game. Those are the same things that the Power Five are selling to uh, their recruits. We can sell the same thing. And as long as we can continue to sell that and they will be able to generate income at the same level. You talk about, you know, Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter, you know, could have gone to Florida State and got a name, image, and likeness deal. But I can tell you, he's a really big fish at Jackson State University. And he is getting, in my opinion, more recognition, more spotlight being at Jackson than he would at any FBS or Power 5 institution. Uh, you can come here, you can play Steven, you can play immediately, and you can achieve all of those things versus going to a Power 5 and having to sit and wait your turn. Uh, so I think those three things have allowed us to propel basketball forward. And, you know, we're going to be working at all uh, 18 of our sports to get them to that same point. Uh, but I am very pleased about our basketball upward trajectory. I think, again, more work to be done, but I think people can now start to see that there has at least been some work going on and we're starting to see dividends from that work. And lastly, um, you know, I know you are the head of the Division One Basketball Tournament Committee. Uh, so I don't know how much you could talk about this, but, you know, the non-conference wins you guys have gotten. Um, you look at a team like Texas Southern who, um, you know, plays those, historically plays those games on the road, never sees home court until January. Uh, you know, they were able to play Arizona State at home and get a win. Uh, they've had some other close calls. Um, you know, depending on who your champion is, uh, how are you feeling with these wins may help you guys' chances of, not having to play in that first four game, even though there are some benefits to it financially. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I do want to give credit where credit is due. I'm vice chair Chris Reynolds, uh, which is the athletic director at Bradley, is chair of the basketball committee this year. So I'm shadowing Chris and trying to learn all that I can, Stephen, in order for me not to embarrass myself this time next year when it is uh, my turn. But when you start talking about where you are at the end of the season, you really have to rewind to the beginning of the season. And when I became uh, a member of the basketball committee, I was not well versed in that. It was the first year. And I spent a lot of time talking to uh, the individuals that put together the net. And it's a statistical base format, whatever you, you call it. And they put this information out, but we can break it down quite simply to, you know, who you play, where you play them and how you perform, right? So the who you play doesn't really matter when you start off at zero. It matters after game one, game two, game three, game four. Uh, where you play them matters some uh, early on. It matters more at the end because we start talking about quad one. If you're at home, quad one is one through 30. If you're on the road, it goes up, you know, some more. So quad one, quad two, quad three, quad four wins. I say all of that to say everybody starts off at zero, Stephen. And ultimately what increases your net is efficiency, offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency. So offensive efficiency means that, you know, how many points did you score and how many times did you shoot to get, you know, those points? So if I was 31, for 41, obviously that's shooting at an uh, 80% clip. I know Dr. Cavell is, the, is a statistics major, correct my math on that if I'm wrong. Nobody shoots 80% Steven in a game, but if I shot 80% and I held my opponent to shooting 20%, then regardless if my name is Texas Southern or Duke, I'm gonna be at the top of the net when the net comes out, right? Because of those efficiencies and I won that game. So what has hurt the swag is we've been on the road. We, we get beat by 20 and 30 points. We have poor offensive and defensive efficiency because we're on the road, we plan these teams. And then when it's time for us to start to get, you know, to the meat of our schedule, we're so down in the net because we have such bad efficiencies, it's hard to elevate ourselves. The importance of what's going on this year is that we're having some home we're winning some of those games on the road. The net is not going to come out. I think it comes out either this week or next week. You're going to see that we're going to have more teams outside of that 300 range, 
when net generally comes out, we're in, you know, 298, 300, 310, 311, 312, because we're on the road. We've got to beat our efficiency. Keep in mind, everybody starts at zero. I expect our net to be higher as a whole because of the wins that we've received and even the more competitive games that we played on the road, even some of those losses. Because if you have a higher net and you play a higher net on the road and you lose by very few points, you maintain that consistency. You don't drop in some instances, you can elevate yourself if there's some teams above you falls below you. And I know I'm getting very technical here. Uh, the long story of this is we should fare a lot better in the net rankings. And the better you fare early on, the better your chances are at the end to get out of those uh, 16 uh, seeds. Now, this is just Charles McClellan's opinion. Again, like I told you earlier, I cannot vote for any uh, SWAT team whatsoever. So where SWAT falls, I have nothing uh, to say about it. But personal. Uh, playing in the first four, being on national television, winning that game, getting an extra unit, way more beneficial for the individual team and the conference than to get a 16 seed and go straight and play the number one seed uh, and have less than, well, I don't think there's ever been a 16 seed that have been be the one seed, uh, to have a 0% chance of winning that game, right? It will be only beneficial for us if we can get a 14th seed or a 13th seed, even a 15th seed, you're ultimately playing those teams that should have been a number one seed but fail at some point, right? I think there might have been two or three, two seeds to beat a 15th seed, excuse me, a 15th seed to beat a two seed. So again, that 15th seed, 16th seed, that's a, that's a hard out seed. What we have to work towards is getting a 14th seed, a 13th seed, and a 12th seed. And that goes back to our scheduling at the beginning of the season. So I know that was a long answer, uh, but you asked. I definitely did appreciate it, Dr. McClellan. No problem. Commissioner, we sincerely appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you at the SWAT championship game this weekend. No problem. Thank you. Thanks everyone for being here.